Amen. Is she a good student? Very good. <laughs> Mayor, the meeting is yours. Thank you very much. Welcome to Village Board meeting of April 12th. 20, 20, yeah, 2021. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to be pleased to be led by our newest trustee, Patrick McKechnie. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome, everyone. Uh, for those who have not been here, who have been on the air for the last two meetings, we have our newest trustee with us, Patrick McCaffey. Patrick, welcome. Thank you. I'd just like to remind everybody, uh, if there's an emergency, we exit the rear of the building, and for your vehicles, please do not leave it so directed by emergency service personnel. As I say at every meeting, those of you on Zoom, please look around and find out what doorway or window you're going to climb out of if you have a problem in your house. But um, that being said, go with the clerk. Hey, good evening, everybody. Um, well, also, for the special meeting, that's clerk. There we go. <laughs> okay, good evening, everybody. Um, going to request approval for the board meeting minutes of March 22nd, 2021. <coughs> motion. Motion. Trustee Burke, second. Second. Any additions, deletions, corrections? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Uh, and then request approval for the budget hearing minutes of April 8th, 2021. Motion to accept this presented. Motion. Second. Second. Trustee Police. Any additions? Questions, concerns? All in favor? Aye. Aye. So carried. Before we go any further, just one other thing too, that um, one of the former mayors, James Reese, from 1976 to 1980, correct? He was a village trustee prior to that. A village trustee with my father. Being mayor, previous father. Uh, like all the mayors that before me, They've all added to what we've seen in the village today. And if you go back to those years, the things that you saw then. So uh, my condolences to the family, locally, you know, um, David Reese, many of you know him, that's his brother. James and Dave, Jim and Dave, worked at the casino back in the day. <laughs> the, their family ran it back home on Fire Island. So. He's a loss to the community, um, one of the iconic figures over time. So I guess my condolences to the family. Uh, Village Treasurer. Good evening, everybody. Uh, not too much tonight. The bills for the period of 324 to 412 total is $720,850.96. Five largest bills, New York State Employee Health, 166, 534.49 monthly premium, BSE, G Long Island Electricity. $44,038.50. Being a goal with 110541 attorneys to be. Auric Harrington, which Mr. Egan is inquiring about. Yes. $7,500 for services to secure the lease purchase agreement, which is with Johnson Electric. And the last one, Deborah Breyer, uh, tax redemption, a total 236501.74. I get an approval for those? Motion. Okay. Any questions, any, any concerns, any additions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. So carried. Uh, I have in front of you, you have some transfers. I'm not going to read them all if I could have approval for them. Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So carried. Uh, another item I would like to approve for the village to pay six and a half hours of pay for Teresa Riley every peril starting April 13th. She is getting an increase in her hourly rate. To 3152 as of April 13th. Motion. Second. Aye. 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 Okay. Who was the second? 
Joe. Joe. And then you have in front of you your cash balances as of March 31st. Thank you very much. You know, um, many of you, well, here on the board, I know, but also in the community heard about the incident this past Saturday night. Just down a block from here on South Ocean Avenue and Brook Street, where a police officer attempting to uh, bring that person over who was driving both erratically with his headlights on, uh, was almost killed. He, my understanding is, the person in the car passed him. Headlights are off, driving erratically, he pulled up behind him, car took off at a high rate of speed, and eventually hit another car coming out of Brook Street. And it turned into a, a physical altercation between the police officer and then the driver of the car, during which time he was stabbed in the lake. Two residents, not two residents, a resident and uh, a former Suffolk County police officer. The resident, Guillermo Sandoval, lives on the corner of Brook in South Ocean. A former Marine and um, a veteran had done time in Iraq, so had been in conflicts. Frank Rucapiro of Middle Island just had retired from, uh, from New York PD. You know, if you can have two people show up at the point that you need with the skills that they had, these are the two people that you want. Mr. Sandoval immediately went into his home, got a belt and put a tourniquet on the office leg. He was bleeding out. He was losing consciousness. And he had said that he was losing consciousness. Mr. Rucapiro apprehended the gentleman that had caused the accident and who, who had stabbed him in the leg. Both of these gentlemen brought skills with them that most of us don't have. And most people don't have. Mr. Sandoval had done as a Marine was in Iraq. And Mr. Capero was a detective retired out of New York PD. So they came with the skills to do what they did. Without them there, there is no doubt the police officer would have sure died. So um, they are not here at this time, but I have proclamations that we will be contacting them to give them. Um, I'm going to read, read them. Whereas Patrick resident and former Marine, Mr. Gomero Saldoval demonstrated great bravery and quick thinking when he performed emergency procedure, thereby saving the life of a Suffolk County police officer who was injured in an altercation with a fleeing suspect. Whereas the suspect who was being pursued by police crashed his automobile in, in the process of attempting to flee the scene Stand. Oh, 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 yes. How I will read this, how I should read it to you. I'm fully vaccinated. Can I take this off? We're all fully vaccinated. We're all vaccinated. Okay. How are you, sir? Nice to meet you. It's Finally. a pleasure meeting you. It absolutely is. I told you the day we're going to meet. Exactly. <laughs> we're going to set this up before this happens. Correct. I'm glad, you, I'm glad you got the note. You know what? Yes, my, pa my parents told me that. Yeah. So. I just, and I was just saying is at the beginning before this that in the circumstances that happen, if there were ever the two right people in the right place, it's a I know. <laughs> Isn't that something? Yeah, so again, mm -hmm. you, your background as a Marine, right? You, I think you, you, it said you had done some time in Iraq. So, yes. So you've been through these kinds of right. emergencies and tragedies. Unfortunately, I'm sure. I, I saw what was going on with the officer. I knew it you know, needed to be done. 
But if it wasn't for Mr. Frank, as I have been explaining to people, um, I would have walked into a terrible situation because the perp would have probably finished them off yeah. by the time I, I came back out, or I would have had to take care of him, you know, or try to at least before attending to the officer. It might have been too late. It probably would have been too late, right? But I understand. Yeah, there's probably some people that so. he was bleeding out basically. Yeah. The femoral artery, he got him right there. I saw it. I, you know, it was, uh, I knew right away that, it, you know, I told him to, I said, hang on, brother, I'm going to go get a tourniquet. I, at the time, I just saw two people in the corner fighting. Now, the uh, ex uh, NYPD uh, detective yeah. was in plain clothes, obviously. So I wasn't sure if it was just a beef between the perp and another guy. Right. But I said to myself, you know what? Let them fight. <laughs> right. This officer needs help. If they're busy fighting, Went upstairs as quick as I could, grabbed the belt, and came down. During the time that I went upstairs to grab the belt, I called 911. And that was a 911 call that I made to ask for backup. By the time I came back down, it only took a few more seconds that while I was down on my knees with the belt, that uh, other officers swooped in with other uh, tourniquets, you know, real right. tourniquets. And um, we come to find out, well, I'm hearing the detective, uh, ex detective, uh, NYPD guy, cuff him, cuff him, and trying to explain to them who he was. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. So, uh, but, um, you know, like I said, the first thing I, 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 the first thing that happened is I heard a loud noise. I looked out the window. I saw the SUV that was the first vehicle on its side. <clears throat> I put on a headlamp that I always have on the side of my, uh, I was in my living room upstairs. Put that on. I went to the front door and I saw a uh, Nissan which happened to be an innocent uh, person who got into an accident, all the gentlemen. Now, he gave me hand signs that he was fine. Behind them was the young officer giving commands to, uh, to who, uh, the person, uh, yeah, I forget the name of the yeah. suspect. Anyhow, telling him to stand down. The guy acted as though he was for one moment. He said, fine, fine, I will. Then he used curse words basically saying, you know, no, I'm not. And he ran to my backyard. At that point, I told the, the gentleman in the Nissan, I'm sorry, I'll have to come back to you. Closed the door, grabbed the cell phone, uh, ran, uh, ran upstairs. By the time I came down, the officer was down and he was in need of help. And that's when I saw, you know, the commotion in the corner. Yeah. That's when I went back upstairs and I saw the wound and everything. I said, hold on, brother, I'll go upstairs and get a tourniquet. And I'll get up, I'll get a belt. And uh, I did the phone call and grabbed the belt. And, uh, you know, by the time I came down, a few seconds later, the officers were there in a few minutes. Uh, you know, they, they came by, they got two more tourniquets on them. And then one officer said, we got to get them to the hospital. So let's carry them. Um, I offered a fireman carry them, which is a one man carry. But I, I don't know if they understood what I, what I meant by that. It's a Marine Corps term, I think, or it came from firemen, but we call it fireman, <laughs> we call it fireman carry, which is a, the easiest way to carry one man by yourself. Anyhow, I grabbed his boots and just placed them on my shoulders and, uh, the other officer grabbed his torso and head and we got him in the SUV and that was that. And we're still praying for him, right? Because yeah, we're not, yeah. 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 So that was that. I'll tell you, one of the things, when I heard it, because I got me a text from public safety about, about 11 o'clock, it's about 15, probably 15 minutes after. And it just sounded to me like it was horrific. And it's, and obviously it was. Yeah. But it, it's people like yourself and Mr. Luke Capero, Frank. Yes, yes. Um, without you two gentlemen there. The, the officer may not be here today. He probably wouldn't be. Right. I, don't, I don't know. Because if you were the only one to come down and with what you saw, right. you'd, have, you'd have to go after the other guy. Right, to him. right, to protect him, right. Right. So they may be, and, and, right. And I, I think also the fact, how many years were you a Marine? Uh, I joined the reserves. I, uh, I did all together with the reserve six years. I was lucky enough to just do one tour. Right. My final destination was Basra. Uh, which is the second largest city in Iraq. Right. Yeah. Yeah, so, so the, the, you came with, with that kind of training. Right. My son was in the army, he was a special forces guy, and he just heard, said to me one day, he said, and they, 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 they teach that the medical they teach us brings us probably pretty close to being able to do minor surgery. <laughs> when one guy goes down, everybody's got to be there. Right. right. Yeah, so, I, so I, 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 I think what the Marine Corps does it. The, the biggest thing they do is they they instill in you to to basically uh, when a situation like that occurs, 
you don't think about you don't think about it twice. You just don't. It's second nature to to, to run out, you know. Yeah. And it's something that was second. Um, you know, basically, my mother said it again because, uh, as you know, Jack, I bought that house three years yeah. ago, and I gave my parents part of the house. You know, we're immigrants, and they can't afford to live on their own, so I gave them the bottom part of the house. And after the whole thing happened, she was kind of quiet. So I said, "What's the matter, Ma?" And she said, uh, "She said, son." Just like when you were in Iraq, you didn't, you didn't call often. You weren't you weren't in a comm unit. You could have called more often, and and you were outside. I don't know what's going on out there when you're out there. <laughs> you know, you went outside. You came upstairs, grabbed a flashlight, yelling about a belt, and then you know, and you you're outside, and I don't know what's going on. So that's that's what's going on. But I'm fine, and, and it's okay. She said, "I'm used to it." Right now. <laughs> exactly. She's fine now. She was definitely you know, and the thing is, I. Three hours earlier, uh, I got done at like 7.30 p.m. So I would say that's, uh, yeah, that's about four hours earlier. I had just finished the front. I planted <laughs> a bunch of flowers and everything for her. And then the guy, I don't know if you guys saw the pictures, but yeah. the guy crashed right into, he missed my columns with the lines oh, yeah. by six inches. <laughs> I had two columns with lines on it. Yeah. He hit the tree. Thank God that gentleman was okay. He was definitely in like an innocent uh, older gentleman. I feel bad. I hope he's all right. I, I went by about 8 15, 8 30 this morning. Car was still laid up on the lawn. There was still the cops in there. Right. But really, I, when you hear the story from a person like yourself, you've been through the things you've been through in your life. Um, having you as a resident, and now as someone who we know, right. I'd like to present this to you. Thank you. I appreciate it. You really it. kind of outlined it a little bit. Thank you. To ask my boss. Okay. See, I sent you an email. I saw that. <laughs> Wednesday would be fine, but I'll, I'll I'll see what I can do. Okay. For uh, yeah, for the, the other town. Guy, the other guy's coming too. So oh, okay, great. Both of you want to get both of them. You want to use this phone here? Yeah. Put this. You're doing both. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I'll I'll work on that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. Yeah, we were supposed to say we need it. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. Yep. Sometimes it's the best time. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, well, thank you for what you did the other night. Thank you for your service. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank nice thank to meet you all. I'm sure I'll see you guys thank again. Thank you. Absolutely. Jack, I'll see you soon. Friend. Tell, uh, tell Mr. Romain that I'll try to make it See, we're very lucky people that have people like this in our community. And as Mr. Sandoval said, when he came down, while he was taking care of the officer, Frank Caparo, the retired police officer, it was in mortal combat because you didn't know the guy had, probably still had the knife. Mm -hmm. And he was st still resisting. So Mr. Caparo will we'll hopefully get a hold of him. If you make it, can you help me track the back? I can down? help you, yes. Yeah. So, it, um, perhaps we can do something to repair his lawn, 
Okay. Um, I like to say the user uh, better note. There could be a better note than what we just saw right now. Um, but on a, a one that's a little easier for us to understand. I have a, a letter here from the superintendent of the Patrick Mifford School District. Um, I'll read the letter. Dear Mayor Pontier and Village Board, as you know, there's much excitement about the potential of our senior prom being held on Main Street. This will be an incredible opportunity for both our students and the businesses on Main Street to support one another in a very beautiful way, an important way. The district has been having ongoing conversations with the Chamber of Commerce and other key players to ensure that we can bring this planting to fruition. In order to effectuate the plan, I respectfully request that the village board would consider closing Main Street Monday, June 21st, 2021, between the hours of 4 and 12 a.m. in order for us to facilitate our senior prom. Um, will be from 6, 6 to 11. The additional hours requested are for setup and rate and also rain dates of June 22nd, 23rd, 28th, or 29th. Your support in this regard would be greatly appreciated. I just think it's a neat idea. It sure. really is just, sure. it is just such a unique opportunity. And Jack has been in on some of the meetings, how excited they are about it. Um, I spoke to the principal the other day. Dr. Zilowitz, and he said that the school is very, very, they're just so excited about it. And I think if any of us have talked to anybody out on the street about it, they just think it's the neatest oh, thing. Yeah, it's cool. You know? Yeah, yeah. There's, yeah, a lot of buzz about it. It's really cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Zilowitz said that he had, uh, mm -hmm. he has gotten phone calls from various other school districts yeah. asking how, how do we go about doing this? And I feel sorry for the <laughs> remain because he's going to have people asking that he's going to be they're going to be asking for the support yeah. in, in the matter that we support and that just doesn't happen but i just wanted to add that the theater is uh participating in the yes theater. very much so yeah. yeah theater and chamber chamber of you know, public safety um theater has a very important role uh the restrooms yes <laughs> so we'll be doing that yep yeah. and other things are going to be done exactly exactly so that's a motion. Do you have a motion? Motion. No. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So carried. And I'll keep you informed of all along this process. And I think it will be, a, it's going to be fun. And do we have Mr. Smith someplace? He is. He Denver? is an Last, I'm sorry. He was there. He was there just two seconds ago. Oh, now Veronica's there. He said that he was having some audio problems. He just texted me. Take it easy, Veronica. Good night, Veronica. Good night. I believe he was probably having internet problems because he had said his video and audio were breaking up. He's been having that at different times. Let's, let's go to Mr. Kennedy. He's not in attendance. He's not in Okay. Yes. Oh, we had some better people in attendance than him, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> didn't want to. Didn't want to follow. Really. Yeah. Had, had to follow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mayor Krieger. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, just a few things. Uh, public safety report. Um, I've gotten a lot of reports in my neighborhood. And I don't know if anybody else. Again, people breaking into cars. Becoming a real habit in uh, in, my, in my neighborhood. I get reports of it regularly. Uh, I don't know if anybody else is hearing about it where, where they live, but uh, if you do, please. Uh, I've been on Facebook uh, asking people to please call the police if it happens. People think of it as like, ah, it's nothing. Somebody, you know, probably just threw my car and steals money, but it's a crime. And, uh, you know, people send the, the, the ring doorbell thing and say, do you, have you seen this guy? But until you call the police and, and put it on, on, you know, on a record that it's happened, mm -hmm. you know, what are people on Facebook going to do? Yeah. But, uh, you know, I urge anyone to treat it as a crime because it would be like if they walked into your house, with the door open. And number one, lock your car, because if, they lock, if you lock your car, it's not going to happen. They're not, they're not breaking windows. When I was a kid, they'd break your window and steal your stereo. 
Yeah, mm-hmm. they don't want, they're not looking for that and stuff. They're just looking for money, cash. So please, if, if it happens, first of all, lock your car. Second, if it happens, call the police. And uh, hopefully they'll uh, be able to take care of it. One other thing, just on the public safety piece, I received a phone call today from the, uh, the chief of the ambulance company about this on Saturday. And uh, it had gotten such to the point of chaos that when they, they got the, the guy in who, uh, who did the stabbing into their ambulance because they were taking the cabin, <clears throat> they asked one of our public safety officers to ride with it because their, their two EMTs were too busy trying to control him along with two other cops in the back of the ambulance. So it's, it's yeah, with some kind of PD, the gentleman, but it really became a team effort with all of the, the agencies somewhat involved um, with the, uh, the controlling of the situation, making it safe. Yeah, and our guys are a lot, a lot of times the first on the scene because yeah. they're here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they're not police officers, but they do, uh, do a great service to the village and uh, we appreciate the work that they do. Uh, also, on, on the code enforcement end of uh, public safety, I had a neighbor report some suspicious digging around the neighborhood and uh, in one of the houses. And it turned out that somebody was digging very close to the foundation. And uh, she reported it to me. I reported it to to the building inspector. They went down there and they found that people were there to put a stop work order. So here's another situation where, and, and what I tell everybody is don't wait to call me. Call me when it's happening because then we can do something about it, and we did. I'd like to thank the building department for, for coming down there and doing what they did to put a stop work order on it. And uh, hopefully, uh, people will realize what they were doing was not proper. Uh, the village of Batchel. So, thanks to them. I uh, also have uh, a little bit to talk about the theater. <clears throat> we have another meeting this week. Uh, we're talking about reopening soon or within month or so or something. Uh, we're still waiting for direction from the governor, but things are moving ahead with the theater. Uh, and uh, the programming committee is hard at work coming up with ideas of what kind of uh, events to have there. So cross your fingers. Hopefully everything will go well and we'll be opening the theater again soon. And uh, you're all invited to come to our first show. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. Looking forward to it. Jack. Good, good, good. It's been, a rough, it's been a real rough Seriously. year. It's yeah. been a rough year. Yeah, that's for sure. Yep. And uh, we're, we've been holding it steady. Everything. You know, it's, we need, still need people to be there. You know, there's a lot, a lot going on. Yeah. But uh, Michelle Rizzo Berg, who is the, I guess she's the, the executive director there right now. She's been doing a lot uh, to get the place ready and to, uh, to uh, work on new things like streaming, video streaming. We bought all kinds of equipment for that. So. We're going into the you know the new era at the theater, and hopefully we'll be open and we'll all be able to go to that first show. So that's all I have, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, very Mr. Much. Mayor. We do have Mr. Smith rejoin oh, us. Yes. yes, I would. He's there. Am I here? Oh, Mr. Harry. Oh, wow. I, uh, I was kind of coming and going when Mr. Sandoval was there. And then I, I lost the connection altogether. But hey, uh, thank God for Mr. Sandoval and the NYPD office and many thanks for their quick actions. Uh, I'm going to just start tonight by congratulating Trustee Patrick Maheffi on his appointment to the Village Board of Trustees. And Patrick, I want to welcome you personally and on behalf of the BID Board of Directors to the, uh, this village board. And I look forward to working with you as we go forward. And with that having been said, congratulations to Lori Devlin as she officially takes over as the village clerk. So best to both of you. I look forward to working with you both as we go forward. Uh, a few things on the bid side. We have a bid board of directors meeting tomorrow. That's our regular monthly meeting. Uh, part of what we're gonna discuss is the annual meeting, which is gonna take place on June the 8th this year. And of course, at that time, we'll have the election of uh, the, the re-election for the most part of the bid board uh, offices. We don't have any new candidates at this uh, time. So basically 
the board's going to stay the same. But they've been doing a great job, so it's a great board to work with. Uh, continuing with the bid side of things, garden maintenance. We're working with Joe Dean and DPW to get the garden areas in order for the summer. Uh, in early May, we will take over the, uh, the ownership of that with the help of DPW and uh, see that through uh, the entire summer. As far as the Sunday market, I believe there's a resolution that's gonna be uh, uh, voted upon tonight. We're looking to open it on May 2nd. It's gonna be a small opening, uh, maybe six or eight vendors. It's, it's a lot earlier than we normally would open. However, there's a few farmers that have greenhouses. They wanna come out. There's a few other vendors that wanna get started early. So we're gonna start it on May 2nd. And on the 6th of June, we're going to have the, uh, the, uh, the regular opening that we would have with all the vendors that we normally entertain. Uh, a little talk about the Riverfront Committee. They're planning a huge promotional campaign to uh, kick off in the next couple of weeks uh, for the summer and then for their summer season. Uh, the BID every year gives stipends to various organizations. The Riverfront Committee, we, uh, we authorize $7,500 for them to spend on promotional activity I had a meeting with uh, you, you know, the Riverfront Committee this morning. They're going to take that money, which they have to spend by, by May 31st, because the, obviously that's the end of the fiscal year, and it's appropriated for this year. So uh, they, they do have a campaign kind of similar to what we did on Main Street in the summer with the, uh, the stipend that the BID put up for that. There's going to be a lot of social media. Uh, they're going to do a drone fly through up the river and, and, and up and down the river, I should say, and pretty much talk about everything that goes on in the river or on the river. Uh, within a summer season. So, uh, you know, we've got the $7,500 from the BAD site to support that. Come June 1st, the BAD board has appropriated another $7,500 so they can continue that campaign and hopefully have a very uh, successful summer season. I think we're all looking for a little better summer season than perhaps what we had last year. Uh, the last thing I have is we have the BAD, I guess it was about 10, 12 years ago, we put two kiosk type signs up at the railroad station and at the ferry terminal. And over the years, they've become a little tattered and certainly outdated, even though we've updated them several times since then. So a part of what's gonna be on the agenda for tomorrow is to re-up those boards and, and get a new schematic to put on them, uh, have them make some sense for what they represent today and uh, just make them look good for uh, people visiting the village this summer, uh, whether it's by train or, or by way of the ferry. Uh, you know, we're gonna put we're gonna put our best foot forward and uh, have a nice product out there. I think that is all I have. I know I've been talking quickly because I'm afraid I want to get cut off again. Uh, any questions for me? That's all I have. Any questions, Glenn? No. Dennis, it's always a pleasure, my friend. Thank you, Dennis. Pleasure, Thank is, you. Mine. pleasure is mine. Thank you all. Are we looking at it? Oh. <laughs> okay, you're ready, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Ah, uh, Mr. Keys. Thank Mr. you, Mr. Mayor. Still happy with him? Sorry, Mr. Happy <laughs> name. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, fellow board members, and, and viewers at home. Um, just another official welcome to Pat to his first official board meeting. I'm uh, certainly looking forward to working with you, Pat. For many years to come. And Mr. May, I'd like to echo your condolences as well to the Reese family. Uh, Jim, anybody, we all know what, what it takes to dedicate a lot of time and commitment to the village and, and Jim certainly did so. And the Reese family itself has been so instrumental in, in, in Patchwork building. So uh, <clears throat> express my condolences to them as well. Um, back on May 3rd, April 3rd, Mr. May, we had our 21st money run. And as I'm sure you know, it was a very spectacular event. Uh, the kids all had a ball, uh, spent a lot of time running around. I brought a couple of my grandkids there and, and they really had a, a wonderful time. It was a good day, great weather. It's a positive tour park, it's just ideal for that. Uh, and they really had a good time. Uh, my granddaughter was obsessed with finding the golden egg that she spent so much time running around looking for the golden egg that she kept forgetting to fill it fast and everything else. But, but they had a wonderful time. And, and a tip of the hat to um, our volunteers, um, Joanne and Emily from the Treasures Department, um, Maria, 
called out for help. They were all ears, you, and they hopped down, hopped right over to help. And his daughter was, also. Yeah, the, and and um, it was Joanne's <clears throat> daughter, his son, I think, was actually the bunny. Joanne's daughter. Joanne's yeah. daughter was the bunny, and they, to see the kids um, help out, it was really good. It was a good day all around. Um, as I'm sure you all know, Earth Day <clears throat> is April 22nd, which is actually Car Free Day. So I would encourage anyone who lives in the village and perhaps works right here at Village Hall, which is really not very far, to leave your car in the driveway, take a walk, maybe ride the bike. Uh, Mr. Mayor, don't ride the bike. Maybe some of <laughs> <laughs> that. I've seen you ride a bike. We'll stay away from that. But uh, just a reminder, it is Earth Day, and so keep in mind, be a little conscientious about what we do to uh, protect Mother Earth and leave your car in the driveway and walk as much as you can. Lori, I'm not putting any pressure on you, Lori, but I, I will be watching. I will be checking your driveway and seeing if your car is still <laughs> walking. <laughs> um, to coincide with Earth Day, on, on April 25th, um, we are, the PEP committee has, I think I mentioned this before, in conjunction with Save the Great South Bay and the Creek Defenders, uh, have organized a, uh, a cleanup, a neighborhood cleanup. Um, in the meantime, Maria Parks Department had organized one for April 24th, so I had made a phone call. We kind of, we're going to combine them. Um, it would make more sense to do one in the shorefront and, uh, and the neighborhoods. We're going to meet at 380 Bay on April 25th um, at 9 a.m. Um, you know, we have to last year when nobody really could do anything, and now we kind of feel a little bit free to go out, especially in the outdoors. And so this will be the first... Um, I guess, Mr. Mayor, you could say this will be the premier parks and pep partnership paper pickup, something like that. I, <laughs> so anyway, we had a <laughs> work in progress. We're, we're, it's a little <laughs> progress. Yes. Um, in fact, if, if, if your name starts with the letter P and you come down on that day, we're going to give you your own pail, the paper pickup pail as a promotional. Parks and pep, it's a parks and pep paper pickup promotional. You will get a purple pail with your uh, the village seal on one side and the logo on the other side. So really, come on down and, and help us. Well, get a plastic. <clears throat> if, excuse me. Well, get a plastic poker. To a pick recyclable, up. A recyclable <laughs> plastic <laughs> poker to pick up the paper. A, a poker, <laughs> to pick, a poker to pick up the paper promotion. Yes, exactly right. right. So, I think the mayor's calling you out. On right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to see if you show. I want, I want to see. I want to see if Paul performs. Uh, at the, uh, <laughs> Purple plastic pick up, pick up the paper, put it in the pail. Exactly right. You've got it right. So, uh, Mr. Mayor, my wish list I'm requesting approval to hire Robert Dono, Nicholas Constantino, Joseph Abadi, and Nicholas Cristoforo as stock staff at $13 an hour starting May 1st. Motion. Second. Okay. And I'm requesting before you, go, Joe, before you go before that, I want to apologize to Veronica, who's sitting right now trying to take. The minutes of this meeting. <laughs> and I think I you're pissing away. Why could you pull a, uh, who was the lady at Watergate that Lincoln stepped on the thing, right? When you, the 18 minutes, if you could step on and stop the tape <laughs> <laughs> at a certain time when I talk, that, that'd be um, Okay, we got approval on that, right? I'm yes. requesting approval for the EOC of Suffolk Women's Veterans to hold a 5K for fighters race at Shorefront Park on Saturday, October 9th. 5.30 a.m. to 11 a.m. motion. Second. Aye. Aye. Thank you. I, I think that's all I have. Yeah, that's all I have, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Christy, please. All right. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. That's, uh, you know, Joe's a tough act to follow. I don't, I'm almost speechless. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but anyway, um, my hat's off to the two uh, heroic gentlemen from Saturday night. Really appreciate what they did. They stepped up. They they took care of business. They probably did save that office's life. Absolutely. So thank thank God that that they were there. Yeah. You know, in, in such a situation, thank God those good two guys were there. Absolutely. I think somebody was looking looking out for them. Um, I'd just like to give a quick report. As Dennis said in his report, uh, the guys are out there busy still doing spring cleaning. They're cleaning up the flower beds. They're cleaning up you know old leaves and debris getting everything ready and nice for um, the summertime to come. Um, I wouldn't, haven't said that. I'd like to say that um, dumping is still free on Saturdays this whole month of April. 
So if anybody out there, you want to take advantage on Saturday, clean your yard, clean your basement, whatever you're going to do, uh, go right down to DPW. You can get rid of it there on Saturday. Um, and uh, we're waiving the fees for this month. Just, just a little reminder for that. Um, the guys are also busy out there patching roads, fixing potholes. I think every time they go out there, taking like two tons of material out there and uh, laying it out and cleaning potholes up and fixing cracks in the road. So they've been working very hard doing that. Um, so my hats off to my guys. They've been doing a great job. Joe, Peter, Louie, all those guys doing a great job. Um, this time I'd like to request approval for an added sewer district connection for the Mercy Center um, Ministries at 296 River Avenue, and uh, we will be waiving all the key money sewer charges. And just on, on that note, um, it's a residential place, and we do not charge key money. So the waiving of it is, is within the, the, the policies. Second. Second. In favor? Aye. Aye. And then next, I'd like to uh, <clears throat> have a resolution to ratify prior approval to hire James Vogt and Nicholas G. And Morella as seasonal DPW workers at the rate of $15 an hour, and that's starting today, April 12th. Okay. Uh, How much did you make, Jackie's? Buck and a half. <laughs> Check, dude. <laughs> Can you imagine? I'm proud of, I'm proud of, right? so I gave half of it to my mother, and she put it in the bag. I'm proud of it. <laughs> And that's all I have, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Thank you very much. Christy Ferb, who looks better than the picture I saw. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, first, I'd like to compliment the mayor for the, uh, the efforts that he's made uh, with regard to our new parking uh, activity in back of the, the, the uh, library and the court. Uh, keeping a good eye on the village's money. Thank you. We, we took a cost that we, it was going to cost us like $7 million, not necessarily all ours, to get a bunch more parking spaces and we're almost going to get the same number of parking spaces what two or three million dollars yeah. something like that so it's a, a, a really great effort thank you uh one request uh request approval for the sunday farmers and artisans uh craft market to operate at the eastern end of the long island railroad station parking lot from sunday may 2nd to sunday october 31st 2021 all existing COVID-19 protocols will be followed. That is mentioned earlier. That's a motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. That's all I have. Trustee Brickles. We're, we're out of order know? here? Yeah, I, I, I made that mistake. I put the other oh. order. You know, you give me one simple job. I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, in Lori's defense, Nova's agenda does make it a little bit more arduous because you can't fix it yourself. It must be done through them. Um, so that's, there was nothing okay. that could be done for that. But once we move to Civics Plus, that'll be a totally different ball game there. Um, and we do have our first meeting coming up this week, which we're really excited about to get the ball rolling um, with the redesign of our website, um, make it much more interactive for our public. Very excited about that. Um, planning and zoning are both going along very nicely, still on Zoom, um, but like us, we have our board members back on the dais, um, and thanks to Amanda Ferris, she's doing a fantastic job with the Zoom responsibilities. Um, we are up and functioning um, so that all attendees can be participating virtually. Uh, and finally, I have one request this evening. I request approval to appoint Krista McCauley as alternate for the zoning board from 2021 to 2022, and that is a motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Mr. McKippy, trustee. Uh, first, I just want to thank everybody for the kind words, welcoming me to the board. And Dennis, thank you, and the community welcoming me to the board. I'm really looking forward to working with everybody. I um, had a chance to meet a lot of people in Village Hall, including down in Building and Housing, and I'm looking forward to working with them. Um, the Patch Oak Arts Council, just a couple of announcements for that. Um, coming up from April 30th to May 2nd, there's going to be a pop-up exhibition called It Begins with a B, and this is um, Portraits by a beekeeper, local beekeeper, and it's an exhibition of vibrantly painted portraits of local Long Island beekeepers 
sharing their stories, trials, and tribulations. So that's from April 30th to May 2nd. Anybody can make it down to that. Um, and then there is a, there are currently two calls for artists, one for an outdoor sculpture, another for, for mural artists. Um, the deadline for both of those is May 1st. Um, so I would encourage any artists to visit the Arts Council website to get more information on that. Um, with the CDA, the Community Development Agency, um, we met on April 1st. Currently, we are redoing the handicap ramp behind Village Hall here, which will be a great improvement for the village. And that's moving along nicely. Um, we were able to finalize our budget, our CDBG budget, Community Development Block Grant budget um, for fiscal year 21 at that meeting. We submitted that and we have some good sidewalk improvements and crosswalk improvements coming up, which I'm pretty excited about. And our next meeting will be May 6th. At that meeting, we'll have the Audit Committee and Governance Committee also meet. Um, we'll see. I don't know if that will be at Village Hall. Um, we've good news is, yeah, yeah, we are moving along. Good. We are going to bring the CBA board back good. as well. Um, I'll be assisting Teresa Riley in training her to be able to run the Zoom uh, for that. So, That's perfect. Yes. And on that note, as we are moving in that direction, um, exciting news, the village clerk and various department heads got together and put together a reopening policy. Um, so as you know, we've been closed, um, all but closed since what, March, early March of last year. And this reopening policy will commence on April 19th. So I'll just read through the points real quick uh, for the public to hear. We've all reviewed it. Um, departments will be limited to one visitor at a time. Waiting area and hall will be restricted to one seat available out of three. Visitors may leave their phone numbers and wait in the car if the waiting area is full. Visitors must enter and exit from the front door, which will have an attendant stationed at all times. Visitors will sign in and out. Individuals needing handicap access will be accommodated by village hall staff. Um, the new ramp will be complete within two weeks, yeah, fingers crossed, and this will be the only exception um, to the front door policy. There will be a tag notification system installed on the wall near the front door, which will indicate whether a department has a visitor or not. Those departments which will be receiving visitors are clerk, CDA, tax department, building department, and court. The CDA is currently accepting visitors by appointment only. Public meetings remain off limits to visitors. Um, planning and zoning board meetings will, be, will permit applicants to be present at the time of their presentations with appropriate measures to ensure social distancing. So that's exciting news for the village. Village Hall and workers here get to see the public again and the public gets to see Village Hall again. So thank you. <laughs> thank you for putting that together and thanks for everybody in Village Hall to put that together. So would you like a little bit about the process? Because uh, Lori and Valerie basically worked this together. Yeah, uh, well, we met with um, Emily and Joanne from accounting. Um, Emily's been very involved in everything COVID related since the beginning. And then other department heads, uh, Peter Sarich and Carol Giulio, uh, Mary Russo. So we developed these policies and I vetted them through the trustees and the mayor. Um, comments came back and we went over it again and this was the result. So. I think it's been thoroughly vetted and it's uh, it should work out very well. Thank you, Laura. Nice job. Thank yeah, you. You're welcome. Any other comments by the board? Council? Oh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Is there anybody out there? Um, I do not see any attendees <laughs> in the list. Nobody likes it. Nobody shows up. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. We have four current viewers on Zoom. On Zoom. Okay. I, on um, YouTube. Oh, on YouTube. YouTube. On YouTube, we have four viewers. Well, your poor viewers, thank you for uh, visiting with us tonight. <laughs> Any other, no other comments? Do I hear a motion to adjourn? Motion. Motion. Just second. Second. Mr. Keyes. Second. 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 Second.
All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, please remain until we're fully shut down.